Hello and welcome to IS Primers. My name is Shubhashish and you're watching today's daily news analysis. Now as part of our initiative, I always share questions for mains answer writing practice and you can get these evaluated for free. So two answers every week. All you have to do is write your answers with pen and paper, share it with me on my WhatsApp or Telegram. And uh, the details of my contact are there in the description box below. Right, so there you can find the details about me. Okay, so two questions today. So one is about, you know, this theme was there where Prime Minister is reflecting that uh, there is a political outreach from Prime Minister towards the Jammu and Kashmir youth. So I had a very similar theme from the internal security perspective. So I have shared a question. The next one is is about the learning loss or bridging the learning gap you know the learning gap that has been caused because of uh, the pandemic so i'm sharing a main space question plus i have a lot of content of uh, you know things that the government has done to bridge the uh, learning gap so i'm referring to a paib over here so you can refer to this it will be helpful for your mains as well as the preliminary paper now these two are about Jammu and Kashmir. This is the India UK FTA. We haven't covered it as yet. We broadly we know what all things they are going to talk, but still. And uh, polio eradication is an opinion section, but I'm covering it in very, very brief. Okay. So the first news days of misery over Prime Minister tells Jammu and Kashmir youth. Now, if you look at this statement alone, days of misery over. This is a statement that is coming from Prime Minister. And by the way, Prime Minister was in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. He was in a village known as Palli uh, on the National Panchayati Raj Day. So he was there and from there he was addressing, he was giving his message. And he says that Dilli ki duriya, Dilli ki du Dilli or Dil ki duriya jo hai, right? So this is Hindi, Dilli is Delhi capital of a country so cap difference the distance between or the misunderstandings between the jammu and kashmir and the delhi so delhi is towards the south jammu and kashmir to the north so that plus dil ki duri the gaps or the distance between our hearts right so a mistrust that is there so a poetic way of saying it okay so that will be bridged and how will that be that is the thing. How will it how will it be? By the way, this is the main question. Okay. So one thing he says is that we are going to focus on a lot of connectivity projects. So this 20,000 that has been given over here, much of it is associated with connectivity projects. So with connectivity, the duri or the distance between Delhi and Kashmir or other parts of the world for example Kashmir to Kanyakumari so that will be bridged that will be reduced and when connectivity improves misery goes away how uh, connectivity leads to economic integration economic integration means more jobs so more jobs will be created more jobs means more prosperity and it is the youth population which is ultimately joining the ranks of the militants so they are joining the militancy or they are joining the ranks of the stone pelters. So transforming them, transforming their lives, mainstreaming them, providing them better revenues. So they have no reasons to throw stones or join the ranks of the militancy because they feel that uh, the correct, uh, the present political establishment is not thinking about their welfare. There is no other way. So they believe that they believe that they should use this violent methods. Right? So, reduce that misery and bring them or get them into the mainstream. So, that is what uh, it, it basically signifies over here. In fact, we must remember Prime Minister Modi's uh, three T's also. That is transformation through transportation. Right. So, transformation through transportation. That is with better connectivity, there will be transformation in the lives of the people. Okay, so till now we have done Prime Minister Modi's outreach to Kashmiri youth. Now, if you look at this in isolation alone, if you look at look at this in isolation, 
somewhere you can say that it is to concerning the internal security issue yes there may be elections around the corner but yes it is also about the internal security issue jammu and kashmir has lot of uh, instability with that regard and from time to time the the government is doing something to normalize the situation right so here is the question over here there there can be two ways by which question can be asked i have tried a number of times actually uh, taught this internal security module uh, about 5 6 times so two ways you know after the front page second third page had a reference of the fidain attacks and three lashkar e taiba militants were killed clear so there was this militant attack so militant attacks had taken place even recently also there were militant attacks that were targeting a targeting the outsiders uh, to the state of jammu and kashmir specifically after the uh, maybe because of the 370 that is there abolition of article 370 so one question could be what is the present status of the in, uh, the present uh, status with reference to the internal security of jammu and kashmir and what steps are the government taking to normalize the situation so that is one way of framing it's very very direct the other thing is insaniyat jamhuriyat and kashmiriyat has now become a cornerstone of the forces of reconciliation in the state discuss so prime minister modi had referred to this expression insaniyat jamhuriyat and kashmiriyat he says that the problems of jammu and kashmir can be solved by this in within the framework of these three terms insaniyat jamhuriyat and kashmiriyat so insaniyat means humanity humanism so humanity so having a humane approach uh, uh, solving the problem with the sensitivity right so insaniyat jamhuriyat means jamhuriyat basically means democracy so to reinstate the democratic processes to reinstate the democratic processes the system of elections and that to people having trust because one of the reasons why we have issues today is you know the 2008 elections that had taken place um so there was a concern that this election was rigged so transparent way of conduct of election elections with the people trust so restoration of the democratic process so democracy giving the people the charge of their state of affairs so maybe hopefully with the assembly elections the thing would normalize okay i i really don't want you to attempt the answer right now if if you can by all means do it but i'm not giving you so much detail so and i don't expect you to have that much answer so if you are a fresher avoid it if you are uh, experienced then by all means give it i'll evaluate beyond the two two uh, two question limit okay then is kashmiriyat kashmiriyat is basically re referring to the syncretic culture of the jammu and kashmir so we have uh, different different communities that were living together right so one is living together and with cohesion so living with peace living with harmony with the diversity that is there so from the kashmir perspective so one is humanity other is democracy other is kashmiriyat and when we refer to the kashmiriyat one must keep in mind that this government particularly says that when you say kashmiriyat and the problems of kashmir has to be solved you know when this bjp center uh, kashmiri party is different okay so they say that kashmiri pandits must also be included so when this other group says so they say nee fine the kashmiri pandits have to be rehabilitated and if we talk about insaniyat jamhuriyat kashmiriyat this includes the kashmiri pandits the, their rehabilitation also so this is the framework within which the process of peace should be brought about or reconciliation must take place right okay so this is in brief i am telling you otherwise it's actually a half an hour topic for me now this thing is done now moving on this well this statement was made during the days of misery over and all this address was made in the village of palli on the national panchayati raj day so what is this national panchayati raj day so this started in 2010 for promotion of the panchayati raj system during the time of prime minister manmohan singh 
right and this has, this tradition has been continued by the next prime minister so it is on 24th of april annually uh, annually it is being recognized as the Pan national panchayati raj day in fact this question this theme again can be a a question could have been asked actually uh, the issues and challenges with the pri system so an, an analytical approach some something to that effect can be asked um, uh, with reference to it maybe if i get an opportunity in the near future i will frame and give you a, uh, a, a, a disc discuss this situation with you okay so connectivity projects and fdi in jnk so prime minister modi was saying that jnk would script a new era of development and there are investors from the uae that uh, that met right so and they are excited to invest in jammu and kashmir so fdi coming in maybe this barrier was there of the article 370 which stops acquisition of land right right to property was not uh, right to property was nobody could actually acquire property outsider but this limitation had been removed by the abolition of article 370 so addressing discontent this was the editorial much later in the center pages so i have covering it right now because it is in this context only okay so one one thing that we get over here is that uh, the situation is a bit bad but with the outreach that is going on and with the emphasis on the connectivity projects the state per capita gdp the income or the gdp growth of the state will improve naturally if more economic activity takes place so the state gdp will increase and it will lead to the benefit of the society people local people then there was also a there has been an emphasis on the revival of tourism industry in fact i know a couple of people now that who went to kashmir in the last last year so the last years saw a substantial increase in the revival of the tourism industry despite the security concerns in fact political parties be it mainstream be it separatist they were all in favor of unhindered access for tourists so they all favored the pre pre presence of tourists because they bring in more money right they come they spend so local people earn money because of that so that is one thing that is one dimension spiral change now it says that situation is not all that good we okay fine we found people from different political parties having consensus on the tourist issue but overall the things are not so good one is the status of uh, jammu and kashmir as a full time state was reduced to being a union territory right so union territory and that too it was bifurcated union territory of jammu and kashmir and union territory of ladakh so there was a gupkar alliance there was a gupkar alliance that is different different political parties over there they said that see this thing is not acceptable this abolition of 370 please restore bring back the old status the status that was before the abolition of article 370 so this is one sore point the other is now as i said the union territory of jammu and kashmir and ladakh so union territory of ladakh uh, jammu and kashmir has legislature like delhi has a legislature it is a union territory with a legislature there will be elections puducherry is another example so in jammu and kashmir there will be elections but the state has been bifurcated the state has been divided so now there is it is a requirement that we delimit the constituencies right so we need to delimit the constituencies we need to define the boundaries of the new constituencies so that is a requirement so parliament obviously deep limitation commission act will be formed by, by the parliament right so all that thing is there now you should read more about it from the prelims perspective okay so delimitation exercise but there is a concern that the way delimitation is being done it is favoring the political parties that are there in jammu 
that have a better hold in Jammu as with with Kashmir. So the way the constituencies are being divided, it will favor a particular party. And we know in Jammu which political party is very very powerful and have no hold in Kashmir. Hopefully it improves. That will be very nice. Okay. So, so this is it. This is the problem. Plus, we have new militant attacks that are taking place. In fact, Prime Minister Modi, where the village in which he was addressing, 14 kilometers from there only, there were three militants killed. So, two from Pakistan and one one was a local. Right. So, here it says two. In the other article, it was three. So, there are some other issues also which needs to be addressed. These are things that, that needs to be resolved. So, Delhi must engage in substantive outreach and the return of JNK to statehood will be a good beginning. Normally, I have seen with the editorials is here in this portion, they tell us about the past, what all has happened. Then in this is a bashing of the government and uh, subsequently, somewhere here only, it gives us what steps have to be taken. Okay. Now, Prime Minister Modi also gave a reference of Ek Bharat, Shresh Bharat. And before reference, before I move ahead, there is one more thing I wanted to refer. Is there is a statement on the Dogri language. So, while drawing a parallel to the sweetness and the richness of the Dogri language and culture. Right? So, Dogri language. So, one thing is clear. Why would Prime Minister Modi, when he goes to Kashmir, he will talk about Dogri language? It's predominantly spoken over there. No other reason for that. So, Dogri language is spoken in which state? Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. So, this, this is there. It is classified as an Indo-European or Indo-Aryan uh, language. It is in that group. So, one thing is there. Now, a question arose in my mind. I checked. Is Kashmiri language the same as the Dogri language? Is Kashmiri language the same as Dogri? No. Recently, uh, recently, I say it means uh, last year, everything seems, you know, because of the pandemic, it seems recent. So last year, there is a constitution, there is an article in the constitution known as the 8th schedule, which has a list of official languages. So for the state of Jammu and Kashmir, Kashmiri, Dogri, Urdu, Hindi, English. So these are mentioned in the 8th schedule. They were ad added recently in the 8th schedule. So Kashmiri language was added alongside uh, Dogri. Dogri was already there. Fine. So that means Kashmiri is different from the Dogri language. Clear? Now you know the 8th schedule also. Okay. Now concept of Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat. So Prime Minister gave a reference of Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat also when he was giving this address. Okay. So what is this Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat? I think uh, if you're non-Hindi, so one India one India or something like there is a cohesion across the country, right? So, Ek Bharat, if we are united, we are Sresh Bharat, we are developed, we are advanced, we are unified, we are powerful. So, Ek Bharat, Shresh Bharat, Sarva Shresh, Shresh, okay. So, this was started uh, during the, you know, this was to commemorate uh, um, a freedom fight, fighter or his, uh, on his birth anniversary, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. So, he was responsible for unification of the country. So, Ek Bharat, Shresh Bharat, to promote the unity or the unification or in, intact, keep the intact, keep intact the integrity or the, you know, resolve the problems of differences that are there between the people of different parts of the country. So, this was a unique initiative that Prime Minister Modi came up Known, known as Ek Bharat, Shresh Bharat, in which, you know, in a country we have a lot of cultural diversity and people are not sensitive actually. In fact, remember last time we referred to a case study, I, I, there was a society, people from South lived, so Madrasi society. And normally, we very casually, we talk, that, talk them as Madrasi, be it from Andhra, be it from Tamil Nadu, Karnataka. We are not very sensitive. Likewise, people coming from the East, or Northeast coming to Delhi, they are teased. There is a lot of harassment that takes place. You know, the term that they use, if I say it, I'll be in problem. Right, so there are problems, there is lack of sensitivity towards all this. So to bring about that sensitivity amongst the people, this initiative was brought into place. 
So in this what happens is two different states are paired together. So they are paired with one another. Here it gives an example of Punjab and Telangana or I think Andhra which, whichever state. So pa Punjab and Andhra Pradesh. Okay. So pa Punjab and Andhra Pradesh for instance are paired together. So when they are paired together Punjab and Andhra Pradesh they will engage with each other. For instance, Andhra, Andhraites would hold food festivals offering Punjabi dishes or they would promote the culture of Punjab in Andhra and like with Andhra, Punjabis would have to promote the Andhra tradition in their, in their this thing. So that will lead to sensitization, that will lead to better cohesion, right? So that, that will be good for the country. So this is the initiative of Ek Bharat, Shresht Bharat. So this pattern of cultural adaptation of the partner state would be followed by all states and union territories. So this will keep changing time to time. Now Jammu and Kashmir is there in news. Your prelims is coming and you should always have an atlas handy. Right? Atlas close to you. And I have seen this number of times because UPSC does not have, you know, it is not giving you pictures right now. So it basically gives you, tells you that... Uh, it cannot so if it is not giving you a picture it is not ask it cannot ask you like where is ladakh range located specifically right so to ha have a better idea of your knowledge so it will ask you okay fine arrange the following in ascending order north to south orientation or south to north orientation so uh, ladakh zaskar pir panjal dolazar right so these will be given and then it will ask you in that way so you should be always ready and i have told you the reason why the questions are framed in that manner Right. So this you have to do. Likewise, go to the Malwa region. See the where is the Satpura and the Kaimur Hills. Right. Where is this orientation north south? So look everywhere on the map. Yes, this was specific to this, but I would have done this, and it really helped me. Okay. After a hiatus, household consumer spending survey to resume in July. This is important for your prelims. One is who conducts the household consumer spending survey, right? So who conducts? Now what bothers me is that if you haven't studied this, if you haven't read about this, you will, you may get confused, but you are reading the newspaper regularly. You may get confused with RBI's own consumer confidence survey. So you see how similar they are, right? Household consumer spending survey and Consumer Confidence Survey. So this survey is by the RBI and this one is by the NSO. Now it says after the hiatus. Hiatus means there was a gap. Last time it was conducted in 2017-18 and before that it was conducted in 2011 and 12. So this survey is to be conducted every five years. So every five years but it was last conducted in 2011 and 12 also done in 2017 and 18 but it was rejected by the government the government said it has bad data and normally when the government says there is bad data normally they have concerns about the quality of the data it reflects the government in the bad light you know poor performance of the government they don't want something to come in the this thing so they will say okay fine data quality is bad we will redo it remember when the uh, National Family Health Survey had come and that time it showed that there is a deficiency of anemia. Defi uh, sorry, there is the increase in anemia uh, amongst the girl child. So the government said data quality is very poor. So this happens. So last time in 2017-18 and now it is being done. Uh, it will come next year 2022-23. Right, so here we have uh, this, it gives us a brief uh, idea about this. Here it basically says this happened, that happened, blah, 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 blah. Right, so interviewers will be trained, uh, this will be done in rural and urban parts. Okay, this is important, rural and urban, but beyond this, you don't have to go into it. Okay, now how much is the household spending? How much is the household spending? So it is kind of a proxy about the well-being of the society. Right? If you are able to spend more money and money on, if you are spending more on, let's say, food, right, you spend as a proportion of whatever you are earning, you are spending on food or the bare necessities, or you are even not even able to spend that. 
so it reflects that your well-being is not good right if if uh, i may my spending may be on different food may not be so much as compared to other things because i'm a bit well off not really actually but yes as compared to the guests okay right so well-being okay so it is kind of a proxy for knowing about the poverty levels in a country so it helps assess the poverty levels and consumption patterns in the society and thereby it helps understanding several macroeconomic indicators like the gdp calculation so it helps rebase gdp calculations right so things the government people are spending they know so they obviously not every single thing that is being produced is being undertaken under consideration so certain things are left out also so those things that have to be taken into account so consumer confidence survey uh, will tell you about the general economic situation employment scenario overall price situation etc okay now your homework nationally rbi releases many more reports rbi releases many more reports it has to re release right it is the central bank of the country so identify visual reports so you can just go on the publications page of the rbi and you'll get you know there is a list of this thing like uh, monthly uh, reports bi monthly annually so this is by, by the way this is bi monthly right so it comes once in two months so likewise check the yearly reports that the rbi releases which all reports so like i told you with reference to you have to do the exercise for world bank of the imf do the same for the rbi there was a question asked on fiscal stability report uh, sorry finance uh, getting confused J just check it on the uh, rbi website i think that's great you can cross check okay so we all know what happened in jahangir puri so jahangir puri a shobha yatra was going and that something happened and uh, when along the around around the mosque area there was a fight that took place eventually so there were communal tensions after that there was a demolition drive uh, by the delhi's mcd and uh, sorry here it is so four days later it started taking place and uh, an anti encroachment drive in this nearby region okay so this is one this is one what all things that happened so tensions were there amongst the people right it was lot of polarization had taken place now you see there is a tiranga yatra that is going on where people of different people are coming together and somewhere you know the tensions that were there so they say we are one we are united so hindu muslim sikh isai aapas mein ek hai bhai ek bhai hai aapas mein hai bhai bhai right so they are all together so it reflects on the values of fraternity but what i'm interested in okay this you should know right so the Mus the local muslims over there are predominantly muslim people okay so they also sending their children and their elderly for this drive so to show support for this so this will lead to normalization of situation okay now why i i feel this is important from a case study perspective there are always tensions on communal harmony right uh recently i had shared a case study also and i shared uh, some guidelines on communal harmony if you remember ministry of home affairs guidelines so to normalize the situation here the local police or whichever you are in a case study scenario right so you may organize a tiranga yatra so tiranga yatra but at the same time ensure that uh, adequate security measures are taken so that the situation doesn't go bad there was a shobha yatra also that went bad right so that can be done so that is a point that you can take into consideration while writing your case study answer the police had removed the barricades from the c block so c block is i think uh, mainly hindu people are living over there and there is this the muslims so yeah so, uh, c block round, round about from the marsh to ensure smooth movement of the residents but at the same time the security forces were deployed in the area so it is an initiative of the police or the local administration over there no reference by the way nobody is referred to as such still tracing children lost to the world of learning this is what i find is important kashmir thing will keep coming but this is my focus 
So if you want, you can read this question right away. Briefly discuss the issue of pandemic induced learning gaps. Suggest suitable mitigation measures. Clear. Now see, uh, before we go ahead, I refer to the PIB. I thought the government must be doing uh, par in parliament questions are being asked. So there was this minister from the Ministry of Education. So they gave a reply, written reply as to what all things they have done. So you have, you see, you have, I have highlighted the key initiatives over here from the PIB. I have not taken just a photograph, screenshot. So I have increased the font size to, so you can read and this will be helpful for your pre-preparation. Means also, but pre also. So I'll tell you how to use it. But now again, one, one thing you see, the, these are things mainly to do with the academic component. So our answer will have to include more points. So I tried this multiple times. Okay. So first, let us do this. Uh, you saw this briefly discuss the issue of pandemic induced learning gap. So when it says discuss, right? So every aspect of the learning gap that has been induced by the pandemic has to be brought about. That is a discussion. So this means that you have to tell us about the decrease in the quality of learning. So that aspect has to come. The factors responsible, the causative factors that has to come. Right. So every aspect associated, what are the sh shortcomings or what are the concerns associated with the learning gaps? Everything has to come when it be referred to this. So everything, but it has to be centered around this pandemic induced learning gap. Now see, this is an article which just tells us about the situation in the government aided schools in West Bengal. And they are trying to bridge the gap. Now from here, we can infer you know, we can filter out important information that can help us with our answer writing. So this is kind of an interview where it says, even one child lost and left untraced is guilt upon us. These children come from the least privileged backgrounds of society and them dropping out points to our responsibility. But you see, least privileged backgrounds how will it impact their lives? Education could have been the pathway to a better life. Okay, moving out of the trap of the poverty, all this. Okay, next is that since they are poor and marginalized, they have limited access. You know, when the pandemic had taken place, they were still e-learning that was going on. Uh, classes were taking place on Zoom. But most of the children especially in the government schools uh, which are uh, which are less resources parents have less resources so they don't have the phones if they have the phone they may not have the network if they have the network they will not have the money to spend on that uh, data plans right so that is a problem so access to technology okay so least privileged then education has become a luxury for many of them because many of the parents had lost their, lost their livelihood. So they have lost their livelihood. So they would want more helping hands who could contribute to incomes. So many of the many of them would have to have dropped out of the school and may have joined, rejoined the system of child labor. So you see how we are able to filter out information. In fact, Next, in fact, once offline classes resumed, very few were back to school at first. So many went away, many went away back to their uh, houses or mig many of them may have been migrant workers or many of them are not coming to the school as such. So they were required to convince them, right? So not returning. And let me add another perspective to it. What about the girl child over here? Right, so again, that all that hard work has to be done. And think about those children, those children who yet who come to the school, but they have forgotten. They learned about the arithmetics, very great difficulty. The teachers were able to teach them the literacy, basic literacy, basic things, how to write sentence, how to write word. But they have forgotten over the, in the last two, three years because of the, because of the pandemic. So the laws of the learning outcome now the now let's say they were in the sixth standard and now they have to go to the eighth standard or let's say even if they were in the sixth standard alone after three years also they have forgotten the basic things that were required out of them 
to be there in this class so when the teacher is teaching they will feel a sense of helplessness they will not be able to follow the teacher or maybe there will be some students who are able to follow uh, while many of them who are who feel a bit you know left out so eventually they will find this useless and they will be out of the education system so this is a matter of concern okay so that i think this part you can do yourself you can start you can bring about a status of the education maybe you can refer to the aser report it is released by pratham for prelims you, okay it's not by the government you got to know it's an, from an ngo so you can refer to the low learning outcomes they can also tell you about about the dropout rates okay so broadly we have three issues over here three four issues over here so one is the issue of dropouts right so impact i'm more focused on that the other is loss of learning that has taken place learning loss that is very serious and loss of livelihood of the parents so livelihood related factors and this could have drawn them back into the child labor and then getting them back will be a problematic situation now what mitigation measures are to be taken so what corrective measures have to be taken over here one is this dropouts have taken place like these people are doing trace them and convince them so trace and convince and try to bring back bring them back to the education system i wish this point was there in the pib right so it's there in front of you these are the problems this has to this is how it has to be rectified if loss of learning is there then some sort of a bridge course has to be there so some form of a bridge course or changes in pedagogy maybe you you oh, they learned something they have forgotten something so new syllabus has to be there or new uh, teaching methods have to be deployed to bring about a change and fast track the learning right so changes in the pedagogy has to be done so bridge courses pedagogy in fact the government uh, this thing is more centered around this thing then what about the livelihood related factors livelihood so remember the government came up with the mid day meal scheme so they will be providing uh, provided food nutrition right so that can be encouraged so mid day meal scheme so something like that or schemes that provide social security or some sort of a support to the family which attracted the children to the school in the first place so mid day meal scheme it is often seen that it has resulted in better learn better uh, enrollments and less dropout rates amongst the school children so these are certain things that can be done right so that will complete your answer if you go according to me uh, because these are the things that needs to be addressed uh with reference to the government's uh, pib over here so one thing they have done is sop guidelines in fact you can mention some of these you can add in the pedagogy thing or wherever you want to do it right so that is up to you that's your liberty but you have to finish in the word limit then the ncert has been asked to create an alternative academic calendar which is a which is looking at the week wise learning gap learning plans for grade 1 to 12 so bridge course modules even states are request are required to create their own school readiness readiness module and the bridge courses comprehensive covid action plans to mitigate the loss of learning now these are things that are important for prelims so pm e vidya which unifies all efforts related to digital online or on air education i think you can read this yourself there is no point for me you have the highlighted ones right you can read here or the brief description is mentioned so you can do that that will be sufficient and uh, all of this has to be in the ministry of education right all the schemes over here um, ministry of education it should be take the screenshot now moving on to this sri lanka issue very brief so debt crisis we all know there is one in sri lanka and sri lanka was negotiating with the international monetary fund i hope you have done this exercise where you have studied about the imf plus saw the reports that i keep telling you that imf based reports are often asked by the upsc 
like which you know name of the reports and then uh, name of the agency a b c d okay so this is there so they ne negotiating and they say that it is it was fruitful let's see what was fruitful here um, they don't tell us actually so uh, <laughs> So the IMF is basically looking at, uh, it is telling the Sri Lankans that uh, bring about some reforms in your country and uh, negotiate with the people that you have taken debt with, you have borrowed money, so negotiate with that people, maybe delay the time period by which you have to pay back the money or renegotiate the amount of money that you can return back, whatever, do that and come to us. Now, you know, initially Sri Lanka didn't want to go to the IMF, so this is a last case resort. And this is something that you should uh, you should keep in mind because this is a concern with the institution of IMF. One of the concerns they say that IMF pushes for more entry of you know uh, opening it. It basically tells these uh, states, whichever World Bank or IMF, whichever they tell these countries to open their economies and privatize their respective sectors, even drinking water, etc. Uh, so that it provides a uh, you know foothold of the uh, companies from the developed countries particularly the western countries us etc and uh, provide them services over here so and it, it furthers the economic interest of the west so that is one concern and if you privatize drinking water etc there was a name of uh, doing this for delhi also so in in, in such a scenario what about uh, the slum dwellers and all those people what about their access right so that will be a cause of concern okay so this is there you can read world bank just google these terms world bank drinking water delhi so you'll find it okay water connections I'm, I'm, i didn't check this news so okay right india has agreed to extend an additional 500 million credit Right, so we are doing whatever best we can do. Sri Lanka has offered around billions of dollars, but uh, we have also, but not in that tune. But yes, we are doing the best we can. Sidestepping irritants. So this is about the India UK FTA. So briefly, we'll cover this. It's kind of an analysis about what all things are happening with reference to the recent visit of Boris Johnson. Okay. So one thing would have been the Ukraine issue. The other thing is about the FTA and yes, India is giving a lot of, you know, submarine contracts, aviation, plane, uh, fighter plane contracts. So defense related, a lot of things are there which the Western European countries are interested in, including US. So they will be accommodative of what we want in the time being. Okay. So here, let's start with the end. It talks about roadmap 2030 between India and United Kingdoms. So what is this? It is about intensification of relations, be it in terms of trade. So doubling the bilateral trade by 2030 or in terms of health, climate trade, education, climate finance, all of this, they will be working on it. Science and tech defense mentioned in the last, but I know this is one of the first concerns for them. So this will expand the UK India health partnership to enhance global health security and pandemic resilience. Okay, so this is there. So this we did, this we did. So one of the thing is doubling the bilateral trade. Now, how will that take place? One way could be that India and UK give each other preference in terms of trade. So having a free trade agreement. Okay, now this UK is very interested. India is also interested. There is a reason for this. So this is not in the article. So just keep it. So remember, UK, just imagine the map of uh, Europe now, UK, an island, and then Europe. Okay. So remember, Brexit had taken place. So earlier, India, EU, FTA was taking place, and UK was creating an obstacle every time. Your bananas are more rounded, it is less rounded. For some ground or, some ground or the other frivolous ground, we were getting a difficulty over here. Now, UK has come out of the FTA. So UK is looking at more trading partners because it is at a disadvantage. Earlier it was getting the reaping the benefits of the uh, pact that it had with the U European Union. There was an FTA over here, kind of a free trade agreement. But UK is out of it. 
So to safeguard its interest, economic interest, it is looking at new partners. So it is looking at new partners over here. So India being a big economy, big market, UK, uh, so UK is quite interested in this. And there are many businessmen also who are putting their money in the UK economy. Right. So both ways it goes. So they are interested in this. In fact, we are also interested because we are not having FTAs with many, very many countries. And UK could be a foothold back into EU. So we can have India, EU, FTA. UK can play a role in that. Okay. So you're right. So we meet some of the conditions of UK. So in that way, we'll be meeting some conditions of European Union. So that way it will facilitate. So it's like a foothold or stepping stone to F India, EU, FTA. Okay, so this is there. Right. So one issue that they talked about was the FTA. And with reference to FTA, they say that uh, Prime Boris Johnson, both are prime ministers. So Boris Johnson was keen that by April, this is concluded. And they were also talking about an Hurley Arvest agreement. That is total agreement has not taken place. But yes, within this, the thing that has been negotiated, there will be certain things like out of 100 topics, 20 would have been agreed upon or 80 would have been agreed upon and there'll be 20 issues where there is a problem, right? So at least have that 80 things start working on that right away. So early harvest agreement, like in the agriculture, we have harvest. So after harvest, we get the cereals. So like that early harvest agreement. So before the full thing has been signed, we can start on certain things. So this had to be shelved because of the differences between the countries. We, they didn't really say what all differences were there. Okay. So, so they had been shelved. Now it was to be done by April, but uh, Prime Minister Modi says the Pavli 2030, right? So it has to be concluded by then. Okay. So they are doing. So one thing is the FTA over here. The other things that they are going to looking at is the defense ties and the cooperation in the strategic Indo-Pacific region. Defense ties, I hope you, now you know, right? We'll not buy from them, by the way. But uh, at least not the aircraft and the submarines, I really doubt. So this and cooperation, cooperating in the Indo-Pacific region. So that they want to do. I don't know why they are inviting trouble. I have no, don't know. Because prior to this, they did the AUKUS also. Australia, UK, US. Right. They provided the critical technologies to USA for the nuclear submarine. Okay. So then they are looking at green technology transfers and international climate finance. As part of UK has a lot of capital, they can provide us, they can provide us the uh, funding that we need to transform into a more carbon neutral economy or a renew an economy that is dependent on the clean energy. So that transformation will cost us money and we want it from the developed countries. So it could be that or it could be that UK being uh, from the developed block, you know, in the climate change negotiations. So within the developed block, if we have a friend, so that can help us in negotiating with the other partners and come to a consensus on climate finance. So Green Climate Fund, you can check this for prelims. Okay, G GCF and Global Environment Facility. Right. So check these two things and global environment facility is not applicable to which of the following. This ca this has been asked in the prelims. I thought it will be asked. I mean, that exam and it really did come. OK, so green technology transfers like smart grids, renewable energy, solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, whatever. So these things now coming on the Ukraine issue, Prime Minister Johnson was very accommodative to the concerns and another concern was the issue of the human rights violations or human rights concerns in India. Like most recently the Jahangir Puri incident, the bulldozer thing that take it, took place. And likewise, Indian side was also accommodative. Uh, you know, this uh, Vijay Malia and Nirav Modi are in United Kingdoms moving scot-free actually. So they are fugitives, economic fugitives, but they have not yet been extradited. So you, India wants them back. UK is not giving them to us. So th that view, they were silent on this. Then one more thing that they are doing is the Khalistani group is kind of getting very active in the United Kingdoms, Canada, USA. 
So they say that there is kind of a pact to there is a group that is being formed, a subgroup to study extremism inside India and United Kingdoms. So extremism and Khalistani movement is an extremism. So extremism, uh, you know, as as New Delhi desires, as it is written over here, to monitor Khalistani groups, but that is not specific to this. It includes any other group also, but. It's, it's a reference towards Khalistani groups, right? So these are the things that are being looked into uh, with reference to India, UK. Last article, floundering polio eradication. Okay, I will share with you a link on from WHO on polio. Now, let me just give you a brief context over here. I'm not doing the entire article I, because I wasn't going to share with you a main space question. So no point of analyzing the, this thing in detail right now. Okay, so just from the pre perspective and some brief understanding that you should have. So polio is a disease that causes paralysis, right? Uh, it causes a kind of a disability. Okay, so a, pro a problem over here and it is caused by a virus. So wild polio virus type one anything polio virus basically because it's a virus so this is again that you should keep in mind now this is a this is very serious problem right uh, disability being caused and uh, the government came up with a polio eradication program as part of which as part of which there was a vaccination drive do boond kya hai what is that two drops of uh, life or uh, two, two drops for polio free life right so there are two types of vaccinations now so one is oral polio vaccine and other is injected polio vaccine so ipv and opv so oreo oral polio vaccine is the one that we ha predominantly have in a country where two drops are being put in the child and other is the injection one now the problem arises with the oral one which is actually a live virus life but a weakened virus so that is injected into the body but because it is weak the human body develops an immune response to it right so oral polio vaccine so this is life and attenuated and the ipv is the dead virus right so it is not going to cause any i mean it goes into the body dead virus that's it it is again this is more expensive this is cheaper now one rational which the scientists would give at least from the government side that uh, when it is a weakened virus the immune response is much better but then when it is a weakened virus there is always a probability that uh, one in a million or two in a million would get the infection so the, your a normal child who would not have been infected is getting uh, infected over here so should economics or ethics guide our choice between ipv and opv now you see medical ethics right so one is it's cheaper it is cheaper but there is always there is always a chance very rare but still a chance that a person a child may get infected by the virus as against a uh, as against a more expensive one that is the injection right so one thing is this the other concern with the oral polio vaccine is a weakened virus is put into your body. Maybe tough, doesn't do much to you. You go to the washroom, right? So stools come out. That stool may have the live virus, may have the live virus, that excreta of yours. That somehow that live virus mutates. It mutates into a new form and reinfects the people. Now this is a cause of concern, right? So this is the management of the bio waste or whatever, especially with this open drains that are there. So there in particular, there is a problem. So normal waste goes into the drains, sewage, so that's fine. But in, in the slum areas where the open drains are there, right? or people are defecating in the open. So that thing, the problem arises or who knows with the sewage also going in one place and then coming back into the uh, food chain of Right. So that can cause the virus that to in a different form. So there is always a risk of the virus re-emerging. 
and the problem the disability that is caused it hampers your life the way you lead your life eventually it's it's a, it's a very very bad effect that it has right so this is the thing about this thing economics should economics or ethics guide our choice between ipv and opv now india with reference to our polio free vaccine uh, uh, the last thing that you know last time we had reported a case of polio was in 2011 and from there on the who gave us a certificate that we are polio free but in our neighborhood which is always having some problem or the other which neighborhood pakistan and their neighborhood afghanistan so there there is still virus virus is still there and from pakistan uh, the virus has come to malawi so in malawi imported from pakistan and of polio there has been a polio outbreak in israel so there is always a possibility of polio re-emerging back into the country so this is a cause of concern that needs to be looked into so israel was also free but now they have virus i'm talking about the who the who is focusing upon the southern arc the southern arc of the remaining regions so africa eastern mediterranean and southeast asia so this is the region which they are working to deal with the issue of uh, virus status there okay now a few more things for your prelims so one is read about each and every disease that has been covered in the universal immunization program so read about this also read about intensified immunization program right so read about that intensified is basically not across the country it is just those areas uh, where the immunization has not been very very strong so intensify in those areas right then so this concludes the session so thank you for streaming in to is primers with me shivashish and before signing off uh, we started work on i i made a short also a youtube short and a reel also so we're starting with the marathon videos so i am prioritizing that so newspaper may get a bit late i am not sure what happens how i fix that thing but i want to do that thing first on a priority basis and thank you for supporting us subscriber base is increasing so thank you for sharing with your friends right then okay bye bye take care all the best